Make money, money, make money. Today, we are diving deep into the high stakes economic tug of war between the United States and China. We're going to explore why this incredibly complex relationship is defined by a critical and, from one very influential point of view, a potentially dangerous dependency. So let's start with this really powerful, straight to the point statement from Palmer Luckey. He's a huge name in both the tech and defense worlds. And this one sentence, from his perspective, really sets the stage for everything we're about to unpack. It's the core of the problem as he sees it. And that's the big question, isn't it? It's one thing to say a country has leverage, but what does that actually mean, you know, in the real world? How does that affect business, national security, our ability to just sit down and negotiate? Well, that's exactly what we're going to break down. See, this leverage isn't some abstract idea. It's rooted in something very tangible, a deeply tangled web of economic dependency that's been woven over decades. So this is the textbook definition, right? But what we're talking about with the U.S. and China is anything but a textbook case. This is about a fundamental vulnerability in the supply chains for the most critical pieces of modern life and, yeah, national defense. And according to Lucky, we are not just talking about stuff you buy at the store. The U.S. relies on China for things like rare earth elements, which are vital for everything from our smartphones to missile guidance systems. Then you've got computer chips, the literal brains of all modern electronics, precursor chemicals, the basic building blocks for things like medicine and plastics, and even the very machinery you need to process all these things in the first place. So here's the crucial takeaway. When one side of a negotiation desperately needs the other for essential goods, it's just not a negotiation between equals. It can't be. That imbalance is the leverage Palmer Luckey's talking about. It makes every single interaction, from trade deals to global strategy, that much harder. Okay, so how does this actually play out in the real world? Let's look at a pretty fascinating case study. Luckey's own company, Undoro, which is trying to carve out a very, very different path. This comparison is just stark. On one side, you have most American companies that, you know, for good reasons like cost and efficiency, are deeply plugged into the Chinese supply chain. But then you have Andoral. Not only are they actively trying to run away from that supply chain, but the company and its top people are personally sanctioned by China. For them, this isn't about quarterly profits. It's about strategic necessity. And you can really feel the urgency in that quote. Lucky's making it clear this isn't just about avoiding parts that say made in China. No. This is about a much deeper dive. If a product relies on Chinese chemicals or machinery or processing at any stage of the game, his company views it as a weak point that they have to aggressively cut out. And this brings us to the really big picture. What Andrew is doing is one thing, but Lucky is suggesting this isn't just a plan for a single company. He's framing it as a potential blueprint for the entire nation. He breaks this huge idea down into three clear, actionable goals. First, secure our own supply of those critical rare earth minerals. Second, start manufacturing our own computer chips right here. And third, build a strong, resilient supply chain with the U.S. and its allies. Altogether, it's a vision for what you might call strategic independence. Now, it's really important to get the stated goal here. The idea isn't to start a new Cold War or completely shut China out. The argument is that by getting rid of this one-sided dependency, the U.S. can actually build a more stable, more balanced, and ultimately healthier relationship for the long haul. But, of course, proposing a plan and actually pulling it off are two totally different things. And this path forward is absolutely filled with huge challenges and a whole lot of uncertainty. And this really matters because Lucky's concern isn't just for his own company's bottom line. He's effectively sounding an alarm for the entire U.S. economy, especially for those critical defense industries that might be way more exposed to these kinds of risks than most people realize. So we end on this final massive question. The modern global economy was built on this idea of integration, of efficiency. The kind of strategy Lucky is talking about, it challenges that entire model. Is it even possible to selectively untangle these critical threads without causing a massive economic shockwave? That is the multi-trillion dollar question facing basically everyone in power today. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe. That helps us a lot.